we have identified a new variant of coronavirus. Scientists are worried about mutant versions of coronavirus that have started to spread around the world. These include a new variant of the virus that originated in England and another from South Africa. At the moment, scientists are investigating two big questions. Do the new variants of coronavirus spread more easily? And will the vaccine still be able to protect us? Like all viruses, the coronavirus is constantly mutating. When it gets in your body, the virus tries to reproduce. But when it starts multiplying inside you, the new viruses being created aren't always an exact copy of the original. If you look at the genetic sequence, you'll see little errors that creep in here and there. But usually this has no effect. The mutations are tiny and they don't spread. These tiny random mutations happen all the time. What happens um, when a virus goes from one host to another or from a person to a person, but most of the time those mutations are what we call silent. So they don't actually do anything to the virus. They don't change how it infects people or how the disease progresses. But sometimes we get mutations that do and result in differences in the infectivity or in the severity of disease. These tiny random mutations happen all the time. But the thing scientists are interested in is when a new mutation actually manages to survive and starts to spread, becoming more and more dominant. But even then, that's not always a big problem. It doesn't necessarily change the virus a whole load. In fact, when coronavirus was first detected in the Chinese city of Wuhan, it was different to the virus we usually find today. By the time it spread across Europe, it had already mutated into something slightly different. Scientists called it the D614G spike protein substitution. Over time, this new variant became the dominant version of the COVID-19. But as far as the average person is concerned, that didn't make much of a difference. The virus still worked in pretty much the same way. If we talk about a new variant emerging, it can occur in two ways. One, that variant's got a transmission advantage, so it's able to spread more easily between people. The other thing then is this founder effect, where you have a group of people where the virus is not prevalent in, they may not, for example, in the case of SARS-CoV-2, be obeying tier restrictions or social distancing. Um, and then they become infected with one particular strain and they spread it to each other. So the net effect is, is that you see this exponential growth of this virus, which could be down to a transmission advantage and or uh, what we call a founder effect. So if coronavirus has mutated into new variants before, why are scientists so worried about two new variants that have emerged recently? One of them from England and the other from South Africa. Well, there are two main reasons for this. First off, the new variants might be able to spread more easily. That's what the evidence suggests so far. And obviously, if it spreads more easily, that means more infections and potentially more deaths. But the second reason scientists are worried is because it's possible the vaccine could be less effective in fighting a new variant. And they're particularly worried that might be the case with the South Africa variant. To understand why, we need to look at the way these things are shaped. A coronavirus looks kind of like a tiny ball with sharp bits sticking out. We call these spike proteins, and they attach to bits of human cells called receptors. Then, once the virus is anchored onto the cell, it can start to infect it and reproduce. To fight them, vaccines work by mimicking the coronavirus. Once your immune system knows what the virus looks like, it sends out these little particles called antibodies. The important thing about antibodies is that your immune system designs them specifically to fight the exact virus that you've been exposed to by latching on to the spike proteins. By doing that, the virus is prevented from attacking your cells. That means the vaccine has to be the right shape so your immune system learns to make antibodies that match the virus perfectly. The problem with the South Africa variant is that it's mutated into a slightly different shape. So even if you've had the vaccine, the antibodies you've produced might find it harder to catch the virus. Fortunately, uh, with these antibodies, is that they don't just bind to one bit, they bind to lots of different parts of the spike glycoprotein. So in many cases, we're producing many, many antibodies to target the same protein. So if you do get variation in one part of it, 
then you still get some degree of uh, neutralization and protection. In other words, whenever new variants emerge, scientists aren't just looking at whether they're more deadly, they also want to know if our ability to fight them could be reduced. If there are too many mutations within Spike, then vaccines may not work. And the good news at the minute is that doesn't seem to be the case for the UK variant. Um, and it's unlikely to be the case for the South African variant, but because there are more mutations in the spike, then we have to be more careful with that spike there, with that South African variant, because the spike isn't what we're used to. It's much more different. The two new variants from England and South Africa are still being investigated, and there's no firm answers yet, but so far it's looking good. Preliminary studies by Pfizer suggest that their vaccine will still work against the South Africa variant, but more research is still needed. Ultimately, it's possible that new vaccines might need to be developed every year, with scientists adapting them as new variants emerge. That actually happens already with vaccines for the common flu. Each year, a new, slightly different vaccine is selected to try and cover whichever variants of flu are in wider circulation. It's actually quite easy to just generate a new genetic sequence um, for those vaccines. So the fact we have these mRNA vaccines is, is fantastic um, for a virus that may start to mutate and may cause new variants because we can adapt with that and change the vaccines as we need to in the coming years. Just like the coronavirus, getting the flu jab is not gonna give you 100% guaranteed protection, especially when there are a bunch of different variants out there. But it massively reduces your chances of getting it. And if you do get it, it also reduces your chances of getting it badly or dying from it. In this video, we're just looking at the new variants from South Africa and England, but it's likely that new variants will continue to emerge. In fact, in the last couple of days, a third one has been discovered, originating in Brazil. At the moment, we simply don't know enough about it to say for sure what the implications are, but scientists are urgently looking into it. So the good news is that it looks like the vaccine will massively reduce the death toll. The new variants might make it all a bit more complicated. It might mean that some people need a jab every year. And so far, we can't rule out the possibility that the vaccine's effectiveness might be slightly reduced. Overall though, scientists are confident that the vaccine rollout is still going to have a massive positive impact. But as the virus mutates, we'll need to stay vigilant for a little while longer. Really, the basic principles of reducing transmission of this virus won't change. So um, hands, face, space, uh, wearing a mask, trying to avoid crowds of people, um, and especially crowds of people indoors, all of that will stay true, whatever variant we have and whichever variant we're discussing. All of the new variants are still being looked at by scientists, and they're likely to soon have more details on how it affects the pandemic. For the time being though, the advice is to carry on social distancing, stick to the rules, and of course, as the vaccine rollout continues, it will massively help to reduce the pandemic over the coming months.